my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome to my channel and today's video is going to be my July reading wrap-up a quick July reading wrap-up that is July was a pretty busy month for me I didn't get a ton of reading done but I did manage to get three things done which is something their content warnings will be linked down below in the description and let's go ahead and get into it and the first book that we are going to be talking about today is The Wicked Bargain by Gabe Cole Novoa. The Wicked Bargain follows our transmasculine non-binary main character who is a teen pirate hiding a magical ability. However, magic is not going to be enough to stop El Diablo from coming to collect the soul of their father and the entire crew as payment for a bargain that was made by their father. Our main character is saved by the only remaining pirate crew and is offered a seemingly impossible task to get their father back. They refuse this bargain and things seem pretty bleak, that is until they meet some unlikely allies and gain the courage to actually use their abilities. This is a book that took me longer than I hoped to finish it and that's mostly because of the pacing and the structure of the story. I kept waiting for this book to pick up and it did but by the time we got there it was unfortunately too late for me. Like I feel like we spent way too much time in certain areas and not nearly enough in others. And those other parts are where I thought this story really excelled. I also had a lot of trouble getting into the characters. There were a couple of characters that I thought really stood out, but it was also mostly just Dami. That being said, I thought this book had an incredible atmosphere and setting. It was everything that I wanted it to be and more. It was rainy, piratey, magical, and dark, and I loved it so, 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 so much. And I also really enjoyed all the darker fantasy elements elements of this book as well. There's also an author's note in the back of this book that talks about the real life history that this book utilized and I thought that was super interesting. I don't know, I'm really sad about this one honestly. I wish I got into it more than I did. It's going to be a three out of five stars but I do think that I would really love to see a live action version of this story. Like I think this would be a really cool story to do that with. Next up is Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker. Mooncakes follows Nova who is a witch who works at her grandmother's bookstore and investigates the supernatural. One of her investigations unexpectedly leads her to her werewolf childhood crush who is battling a horse demon in the woods left without any options and being pursued by dark forces they turn to nova for help this is a book that I really, really wish that I had waited until the fall to read because it has a really amazing cozy fall fantasy aesthetic. And I really loved and adored the art style all around, but that is especially the case when it comes to any and all magical creatures or just magical elements in general. Like so much of my enjoyment just came from purely looking at this, but I also thought that this story had some really interesting and lovely, adorable and sweet characters and relationships. The humor was fun. Not all of the jokes landed for me, but like, most of it was enjoyable. I just, I really did not get the horse jokes. I also do wish the romance was more of a slow burn, but it was also so lovely and so joyful that I can almost forget about that entirely. I really, really, really liked them together. There was also some really interesting and enjoyable character growth stuff going on. I do wish this story went a little bit deeper at times, especially when it comes to the magic system, but I enjoyed this. It was a really sweet and a really cozy read, and I gave it 4.75 out of 5 stars. And the last book that I finished in the month of July is Demon Slayer. Slayer Volume 7 by Koyoharu Godage. Demon Slayer follows our main character Tanjiro whose peaceful life is shattered when his entire family is slaughtered by a demon. This is an attack that also turns his little sister, who is really the only survivor, into a demon. So he sets out to try to turn his sister back to the way that she was and also avenge his family. It's kind of weird to talk about like avenging his family when it comes to our main character here because he's like so nice and sweet and polite, but also he's super passionate about his family so I get it. I did fall off of this series a little bit after the season 3 finale didn't love that. But some time has passed since that has aired and I got the urge to read it again probably because I am really excited for the next arc despite how the last season ended and I really want to get to that storyline which is how I ended up here. This is the start of the Mugen Train arc which is probably my favorite arc in the anime and I do really think that this worked a lot better in the movie. Volume 8 is technically a part of next month's wrap-up but after reading that 
yeah, I still stand by that opinion, and it's not very close either. This volume was just kind of fine for me. I tend to not rate individual manga volumes, but the series as a whole is like at a 4 out of 5 right now. But I did just read volume 9, I had a much, much better time with it, and I am looking forward to reading more. Because I do really feel like reading this series right now, like that is just what my brain wants, and I want to see how far I can take that feeling and how far I can get into this series with that feeling. Because I'm hoping to get pretty far. I don't know if I'll read past where the anime is, but we'll see how I feel when I get there. Okay, so that is all that I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer the question that'll be around here if you want to do that. And hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye!